Now, is that posturing? Absolutely. Now, here's why Washington, D.C. has deemed ending this zero-line crisis a top priority. Posturing can always escalate into action. And when it comes to a nuclear war with India, the Pakistani government has mandated a trigger-happy first-use policy. It's an official policy. It's pretty easy to figure out what the first-use policy means. Yes, but the trigger event, that's the important part. Because in Pakistan's eyes, it's been triggered. And not just theirs. 20 separate UN panels have already come to the same conclusion. And unfortunately, India's official counterterrorism expert fears nuclear war is now a when, not weather, situation. Pakistan can initiate its first use policy. They can preemptively start a nuclear war with India at any moment over one river, the Indus River. How could one river cause such a dangerous situation? It's a lethal cocktail of geography and geopolitics. The Indus River provides Pakistan with 90% of its fresh water for agriculture, 50% of the country's employment, and 25% of its GDP. They call the Indus River the water of life. Unfortunately, Pakistan has accused India of stealing the water of life. You see, the Indus River begins in India before crossing over the zero line and into Pakistan. Well, in 1960, Pakistan and India sat down to negotiate a tense agreement called the Indus Waters Treaty. It gave complete control of the Indus River and two of its tributaries to Pakistan with one catch. One, it appears, nobody in Pakistan caught. India can use the Indus River for power generation and irrigation. This is a big problem. In 1960, when Pakistan signed the Indus Waters Treaty, they had a population of 45 million people. Today, they have 178 million. When India signed that treaty, they had a population of 448 million people. Today, they have 1.2 billion. More people equals more electricity. Since 1980, India's electricity demands have shot up over 613%, and folks there have seen their electricity prices spike 500%. India has to double their energy production capabilities within the next few years just to satisfy their growing population. But already, sudden power outages are pushing 700 million into the dark without any warning, which is leading to fears of violent riots erupting. So that means they're faced with few choices. And the choice they initially made was a dangerous one. Early last year, India began construction on at least 45 hydropower facilities on the Indus River and its Pakistan-controlled tributaries. India's plan was to use the Indus River to boost their hydropower capabilities by 4,000%. So they are essentially damming off much of the flow of the Indus River before it even crosses the zero line. Yes, but that's not all. At any given time, India only has enough water to satisfy its nation's needs for 120 days. The groundwater supply for Delhi, Mumbai, Hyderabad, and Chennai are declining so fast, it's estimated they'll be gone in a few years. They haven't left themselves much of a safety net. So India is also tapping into the Indus River for irrigation. This has created a line in the sand moment because Pakistan is already dry to the bone. They have enough water reserves for only 30 days at any given time in that country. This situation has grown so severe in the slums of Karachi, stealing water from public pipes has become a $500 million a year business. They're literally selling this black market water out of the back of trucks. Karachi is located at the very end of the Indus River, just to the west.